This is me. My name is Giselle Cruz. I was born and raised in Miami, Florida, and I'm proud to say that I am Cuban. Although I was not born in Cuba, I always carry with me a true Cuban heart and soul. Living in Miami, I have been surrounded by a wonderful environment, rich in Cuban culture that has helped me carry on Cuban traditions, and at the same time enjoy the freedoms of everyday life. As proud as I am of my heritage, I have realized that there is so much that I have yet to take time to appreciate. So I decided to go on a journey to try and really experience the life and environment of Cubans in Miami. I hope to find a deeper meaning to my already cherished Cuban roots. My journey starts with a trip down the famous Calle Ojo, down by the city of Little Havana. Here in Little Havana, located in the heart of Miami, it feels like you have been time warped into a whole other reality. Walking through the streets of Little Havana reminds me so much of my family and all the stories they would tell me as a child. I wonder, is this the kind of atmosphere they had in Cuba? Everyone out and about, walking down the streets, smiling and joking, buying fresh fruits, stopping by the local cigar store, and even playing dominoes with a group of friends on the street corner as they drink their cafecitos? Making my way through each corner, I just couldn't help to think of the struggles many Cubans went through and are still going through today to realize these simple daily joyful events. Then I reached a street called Memorial Boulevard, located on 13th Avenue. On this street there are a series of monuments commemorating the history and culture of Cuba. From the memorial flame honoring the heroes of the Bay of Pigs, to honoring the Cuban revolutionary and poet José Martí, to the Antonio Maceo Memorial who was a leading figure in Cuba's war of independence from Spain. This parkway holds a vital history of Cuba's past. While I was on Memorial Boulevard, I ran into a very intriguing older man, or should I say, he ran into me. At first, when this man approached me, I was a little startled. I mean, what kind of weird person just randomly comes up to a stranger like that? But that's when I realized that he wasn't being weird at all. He was being like many Cubans are, friendly, open, and full of life. Then, from a moment's notice, the old man began to recite poetry for me. The words sounded so familiar. But of course, he was reciting from the works of the famous Cuban writer, José Martí. When he finished, we parted in our ways. I couldn't ask for more to end my day in Little Havana. But that certainly wasn't enough for me. So the next day, I decided to go to talk to the parents of a close friend of mine, Blanca and Anolio Suarez. They shared some wonderful stories and advice with me. I, you know, one of the things that I even, I even tell my sons is to, you know, never to forget where their parents, even though they were born here, came from and you know to continue with the even though they are Americans try to have some of the Cuban culture and never to forget their roots. Another important element of the Cuban culture is its music. So Anolio, having a very rhythmic and Latin heart and soul, took out what we call the tumbadora and played it for us. El alacrán tumbando caña de fruto de mi país Mi hermano, fruto de mi país Mi hermano the beautiful beat to the tumbadora, following smoothly with the sung words, made me just want to get up and dance. There is nothing like Cuban music. The sounds of a culture of people that never settle. A melody of constant pursuit and determination. And songs that come straight from the heart. You see that lovely lady right there? That's my mom. She is playing a Cuban song called La Niña Bonita, The Pretty Girl. That's the song she would play for me as a little girl. It's amazing how you can express so much through a few notes without saying one word. Another group of people that I could not surpass is my family. We have my wonderful Cuban mother, my eccentric Polish father, and the two babies, my brother and I. 
As a Cuban and Latin family, we love to get together and share stories, jokes, laughter, and of course, you can't forget the food. One thing that I can say from experience is that Cubans are very contagious people. Take my father, for example. We've converted a Polish-born, Venezuelan-raised man into a Cuban peak. I was born in Poland, in Krakow. Then we went to Venezuela, where I studied and learned uh, my English, my Spanish, and my French. <laughs> but now we live in Miami, and I met one of the most wonderful people here, and she is a Cuban, El Mojito. <laughs> Now I couldn't go on this journey and not speak to the most influential Cuban man in my life, my very own grandfather. He is 99, about to be a 100 year old man, whose life is the definition of what it means to struggle, go through extreme hardships, and still come out triumphant in the end. He has the heart the size of the universe, and a spirit for life more colorful than any rainbow. El carácter del cubano es increíble. No hay otro, ningún país que tenga el carácter que tiene el cubano y el humor y la, 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 el deseo de vivir y la creencia en Dios y, la, y el cariño a la familia y el, la, y el cariño a las amistades. So I have arrived at my last destination, La Ermita de la Caridad. More than just a place of worship, La Ermita de la Caridad is a demonstration to the perseverance of the Cuban exile community. The statue, which was smuggled out of Cuba, represents a time when the saint, Our Lady of Charity, appeared in Cuba. It's ironic that I have ended this journey here, because I too have a belief, one that I share with many other Cuban Americans who have been born here, and that is to one day be able to travel to a free Cuba and continue to pursue those dreams of those who have come before us and have instilled in us a love for a country and culture that is embedded deep within our hearts. So as I sit here on the shores of Biscayne Bay, I pray to La Ramita, praying for that day to come, but also thanking her for all our blessings, especially Miami and the liberties we share each day. Cultivo una rosa blanca, en junio como en enero, para el amigo sincero que me da su mano franca, y para el cruel que me arranca el corazón con que vivo, Cardo ni ortiga cultivo, cultivo la rosa blanca.